Right, let's start the conversation. I want to bring in Courtney Dominguez, who's joining us. She's a wealth manager at Payne Capital Management. So, uh, Courtney, all I'm trying to figure out is, you know, what's tariff drama? What is, you know, sector specific issues with some of the big names like the chips that have been powering this rally? And then, you know, what is maybe just a little pullback since we jammed so quickly to new highs? Yeah, I think that's something really people need to focus on is look at the data. Don't just listen to the noise and all the headlines of things like the tariffs that have been really blasting the headlines for the last several months. But at the end of the day, the economy is still in a really good place here. We're seeing unemployment really low. Jobs reports came in really strong. GDP is stronger than it was before. And all of that is beating expectations. So at the end of the day, you really need to take a look and say, you know what, whenever a dip like this happens because of the headline news, take advantage of it and add any cash you have because the economy still looks really strong here. And if there's a dip, it's a wonderful buying opportunity. Uh, that being said, when we talk about uh, dips and buying opportunities, uh, the market here has shown us the past year, sometimes those dips get pretty steep, right? I mean, uh, is there a certain point where we, you know, look at the level we're at in the S&Ps and just say, hey, this thing keeps pulling back roughly around here? Yeah, and not even just the S&P. So we want to look at where are our opportunities globally right now. And with all of the headlines here, especially related to China, I would actually argue that emerging markets are really a good place that we want to look at. And you're going to see that trading, especially with the trade wars. But regardless, it's actually trading really low compared to his historical standards. So generally speaking, emerging markets are much cheaper than the global economy, but they generally trade about 16 percent lower than the global economy. And right now it's trading about 25 percent lower than the global economy. Hmm. So it's not just cheap. It's cheap compared to historical standards. And any of these trade tension that are happening is only making that opportunity even more opportune because everybody is a little nervous about it. And so those valuations are even lower. Uh, today uh, we get another uh, PPI. Tomorrow we got CPI. Uh, is there potential for you know some kind of saving grace if there's no big surprises here? It seems like the market continues to be kind of fixated you know, on what the Fed and, and is going to do in the path there. And, and I guess tomorrow, if things come in smooth, there's no big surprise, no big miss or no big beat, then, uh, you know, status quo. Yeah, we really got to see how the data comes out. I don't think there's a lot of um, thought that there is going to be a lot of inflation here that's coming in. But it is something we have to look at because we're really assuming that if anything, you were talking about earlier, rates are getting cut, which is what people are pricing in right now. If there is any sort of inflation surprises, we could see that on the flip side. I don't really see the data that's showing that right now, but we're really going to have to see how that comes out. Yeah. Uh, that being said, if there is a, you know, impasse on trade, uh, I know that we've talked about this before and I know uh, I see it in your notes this morning as well about looking abroad and looking at emerging markets. I mean, is there, uh, is the return potential here contingent on something getting done? Uh, because even with the, you know, the improvement in the Chinese numbers, it's coming at a pretty big cost. They're basically doing everything they can uh, mm -hmm. to, to pick things up. And I'm guessing that if these, you know, next round of tariffs go through, that's not gonna be great for China. It's not gonna be great for emerging market because our dollar just seems to be the one place everybody hides out in. Yeah, but I see all of these as short-term concerns that we're looking at. Any of the trade tensions that have been out there have been really short-term blips, but most of the investors out there are going to be long-term investors. So we're, when we're not just looking at over the next couple of months, but over the next year, three years, five years, 10 years, I think emerging markets are going to be a really good opportunity, regardless of how soon these trade tensions get figured out. But I am optimistic one way or another, a deal will come to fruition here. And it's just knowing how that's going to be affected in the long run. But regardless, over the last 10 years, emerging markets have been underperforming. And it's we have this recency bias where a lot of people are over invested in the US right now because it has been outperforming for almost 10 years. But if you look at the decade before that, that wasn't the case. And so we're, we're looking over the next 10 years, you wanna make sure that you have those opportunities because if they do outperform as they very well may, you need to take advantage of that. All right, uh, Courtney, good to catch up. Glad to have you here this morning. Uh, we continue the conversation. Uh, appreciate it. Courtney Dominguez, Wealth Manager at Payne Capital Management.